changing this light up a little no, bit. No, no, no. Listen, Joe, do what you got to do. Sunday, September 6th. It's there Sunday, September 6th, and I'll slap my hand too. But let's just, I don't like yeah, wasting media, that's you know? Better. I don't like wasting ones and zeros. I don't like wasting anybody's time. So since Elliot and I hit record, Joe probably hasn't starting. hit record yet. I'm just going to uh, say we've back. started. Yeah, Check welcome. one, two. Welcome to the show. Uh, guys, this is a podcast not good. With, uh, from the Valley folk. Um, thank Hello, you so one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hey, guys, I'm going to talk about this level. Check one, two, one, two. I'm not even recording. Just keep talking. Check, 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 check. One, two, one, two. And uh, if you guys would like to sign up, patreon.com slash the Valley folk. It's a super big help. We have all sorts of new tiers coming out soon. We're just going to make sure that we're actually in the office to be able to do it for you guys. But, um. Joe's coming live from a, um, <laughs> a shutdown Chuck E. Cheese, and uh, Joe's the, uh, Joe's coming li- to us live from Timmy's birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thanks, guys. Uh, thank you, Ellie. Thank you, Steve. I'm here. I'm live at Timmy's birthday party, and I haven't started recording on my screen yet, so you guys can't even tell that I'm here. Well, you can what hear him. Fun. You can hear him because I'm recording his audio. So if you want to use his audio, listen to the children. <clears throat> you sound um, muffled, Joe. I sound muffled. Yeah, a little low. Quieter, maybe. Yeah. Here, let me do this then. Dare Let's, I uh, say? I'm not even gonna start recording my movie. Then I'm gonna unrecord my audio. I'm gonna get different headphones on real quick. Sorry, I'm Great. using the. All right. Air and that's Joe Beretta. I'm only assuming guys. that because he's at. Uh oh, he put his he put his head headphones right next to the microphone. Th- there we go. Okay. I think you fixed, you fixed that. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Um, <clears throat> because he's at uh, Timmy's birthday party. Okay, no, it's still happening. So I'm no, just going to mute still, him yeah. on my end. You, there we go. I, just, I thought we sit in silence. I well, we I just wanted to it. say I'm assuming his audio issues and connection issues and because we don't have these problems, but the fact that he's no. at Timmy's birthday party um, to me maybe might be why he's having issues. Were you invited to the birthday party, Joe, or did you just kind of show up to the child's party? I think you can always make an entrance if you're never invited. Like, every, <laughs> right. it's always a big deal. So did you do like poppers when deal. you entered? Did you throw down the little poppers or smoke, little smoke bomb, maybe? Um, for those of you that No, I are... just started doing poppers in front of all <laughs> he the just, children. He yeah. just took them. <laughs> Um, guys, for those of you that have no idea what we're talking about, it's a sick roast because Joe's got Recording. some go. uh, birthday decorations up in the background of his uh, Discord video here, which you could see at youtube.com slash the Valley Bir- Folk. Birthday decorations that look like a PA was sent to Party City to grab the fastest, whatever birthday decorations they had. I mean, but, over from whatever but, but I will say, <laughs> it seems like we've got some pointed yeah. interest, at least. in whatever There's that a legit is. Ben 10 theme going on here. Most of the decorations <laughs> have come down. So you guys didn't see us when we were at our decoration best. You're seeing us at our decoration worst. And it, yeah. it's kind of like kicking somebody when they're down, and I don't appreciate it. I don't it. mean to decorate shame. If that's well, you what, have, if that's my friend. You, <laughs> you have decoration Joe. shamed me. Joe, one day, without telling anyone, can you take a photo of you kind of looking to the right in a scolding way and then grab a photo of Heather and then replace those glacier photos and behind you with just your faces staring sort of toward the computer screen? <laughs> or it's just Not like... Not tell anyone. Don't tell your family. Or See how like, your kids react. If someone wanted to do a lot of work in post, you mm. could take an, a, a frame from Joe in this exact video and and superimpose it into every frame in the yes. background. So it just even like these like little, that. even these really bad like Hobby Lobby decorations yeah. that prove that like we're a family. Look, we've got this from the, the Christian store. So it was do Jackson's it in those birthday as well. not too long ago. So they've got the decorations up, which I think is always nice because when a kid sees that, Perfect. like here's the deal: my birthday thing that Alana put together with the Muppets over here, it's been up since June 9th. <laughs> I mean, and what does just, that even mean? What does that even mean? Yeah. When was June 9th? Yesterday? No one knows. I don't know. But I will say <laughs> that um, it's a pleasure to see it because I because it was a thoughtful thing and it looks wonderful. And I'm sure Jackson feels special anytime he sees that. Things tend to stay, decorations tend to stay up a little long in this place, and I think it's to allow the joy to continue and reverberate and echo through the weeks following said event. 
And um, it's laziness. We're it's still you're dirty people. And you're it's dirty. Lazy. That too. <laughs> yeah, I'm we're a still dirty swimming. <laughs> For sure. We're still swimming in balloons that are on the floor that we got to kick out of the way, which is great. And they until they get to their <laughs> withered state, and then it's a sad reminder. But yeah. it's the same with Christmas with us. The only the only holiday that it doesn't do it, and we're pretty good about, it, is Halloween because keeping Halloween decorations up is weird. Listen, that's weird. Scary. I'll tell you it's what spooky. it is. It's good it's old, spooky. It's good old fashioned American <laughs> laziness because I also have suffered from it, and my family suffered from it as well. Because it takes so goddamn long to put the decorations up and make everything look nice and yeah. make sure everything plugs in and lights mm. up and shit and i'll give you 30 percent laziness i think it's 70 percent. it's kind of nice yeah, to have it up yeah. and be reminded I, but i um, think yeah sure 30 30 percent give or take depending on where you live i think let's do a six point spread just do a six point spread either way cover well, the difference I think, no big deal i mean let's be honest there's living in la there is no shortage of homes and apartments that throughout the year have their Christmas lights displayed oh, on, for their, sure. on their balconies <laughs> yeah. or windows and shit. <laughs> like, throughout the year. Like, you mm -hmm. can go in mid, uh, mid like, what's a crazy month? Sept beginning of September. And someone's <laughs> Christmas lights are on in a neighborhood every night. Like, it's their lighting. We went for a walk a couple <laughs> days ago, and just a block away, somebody in their yard has a six-foot-high like solid, not inflatable, just solid Santa sculpture yeah. kicking it in the front yard. <laughs> yeah. Or like, Dude. you know, those fucking those fucking things, man. Like I it's there's such a trend. I'm gonna i I'm gonna jump on I'm gonna get on the Christmas decoration hill. Okay. Yeah. I'm not ready to die there yet. That's where my favorite civil war battle was fought. <laughs> the of Christmas Hill. So far. Christmas Hill. The Battle Hill. of Christmas Hill, <laughs> 1831. Mm -hmm. Happened in Listen, June I think that there's, of 1830. There's something about um, Christmas decorations that people kind of don't talk about. And I know it's way early to be talking about Christmas, but what, Absolutely Christmas not. is going to be tomorrow and we're going to be like, what the fuck? Like, wh where is time? Nothing works in our brains in the universe anymore. So anyway... It, I, you know, I get kind of like, like upset when I see like, um, you know, like, um, you go to the nicer houses, neighborhoods, like when, mm. during Christmas to see how of all the well to do, the well to do people like to spend money on big, I mean, some of them, but they like to spend money on big accoutrement for Christmas right outside of their homes. They decorate their and homes like Disneyland. It's, it's much appreciated, Steve. M much appreciated, yeah. And it's a magical thing to take your family to. And I remember going as a kid, there was a place called Candy Cane Lane in Oxford. I go to Candy Cane Lane every year. We bring hot chocolate. <laughs> yeah, I have wonderful. arguments with the kids because they want to oh. hang out of the windows. And I'm like, you're not hanging out of yep. the window this year. You're not allowed my to do favorite, that. My favorite are the houses where you have to tune into the radio station that they emit <laughs> yeah. from oh, the yeah, house. Oh, yeah. Dang, 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 That's dang, high tech. It's wonderful. That's high Those tech. Are, that's higher a, tech. It's high tech, except now you can just buy like a thing that's pretty affordable that kind of does it for you. We well, plug it in, it just emits a little. And, and I'm gonna that's continue kinda, to think it's Christmas magic. Thank you no, very much. No, no, no. Much. That's the kind of that's the point I was gonna make is kind of the technology, I guess, because like I when I was a kid, that didn't that wasn't a thing. But the Candy Cane Lane was still amazing and incredible, and and uh, and like going to Disneyland during Christmas time, sort of. Um, but I, I, it's, it kind of like bothered me as, as I grew up that those things got more advanced and then all the decorations seem to be, I mean, custom made stuff maybe because a lot of it is just like, and they built it themselves. They build like these crazy facades and they put a lot of time and effort into At it. At Candy Cane Lane it is for sure because I think a lot of those people also were like, artists or prop masters and right. they got a lot of that stuff from the industry right and in oh, their cool. spare time or their or their hobby is they just build shit or whatever but um whatever it is it you know it's great it's great to see a showcase of all those talents and shit but um you know so they custom make these things and then like next christmas they're in like target like something similar to it you know like those fucking reindeer that yeah. are like wire reindeer with all the lights around it. Like that's something mm -hmm. someone made, custom made, and then the Target people were like, "Fuck yeah, let's make that. Let's mass make that in China." <laughs> I remember, I remember being a kid the year that they went from like people would put the lights 
in a grid pattern over the bushes. Yeah. And it kind of ah. laid out, so it looked really beautiful. And then the next year, I remember they sold the lights in a pre-made grid pattern. Like, yeah, <laughs> right. it's like a great. And right. spider like, oh, web lights. They're watching. Yeah. And I'm yeah. sure it's yeah. a huge <laughs> yeah. industry, they're right? Like I love. I want to see a documentary about the people that like stake out product ideas from people's like own creations during Christmas Great. time. I want I, that. I imagine that it's exactly like the first scene in the Santa Claus when he's in the <laughs> the boardroom. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The me we were doing the GI Joe or the, and then Sand <laughs> comes in with his elves in a tank. Right, right. That's that's how Tar- all real executive meetings are. Yeah. Target's <laughs> holiday uh, holiday team building exercise is always in Sherman Oaks, California, in a Holiday Inn, where yeah. they stay there for a week and then take nightly trips to the candy cane I mean, lane that's kind with of a notebooks. Cool job, right? You take oh, all these I photos mean. of it and you write, take notes and stuff. It's one of those jobs that is so cool that that person has to be pretty depressed the entire time because you have a, you're under a lot of pressure. Well, you're also fun. like effectively stealing someone's hard work too. <laughs> that too. So you should yeah. feel like a big you're piece the worst of shit. Person. <laughs> so, uh, Tom, um, what uh, what did you take away this year from uh, Candy Cane Lane? What what are some of the new trends? Well, uh, you're not going to believe no, it. I took uh, a lot. Oh, of I things. took. Everything. I literally took. Uh, <laughs> you know, there was the standard reindeer. There was a lot of um, um, IP utilized um, yeah. with with the Santa Grinch, hats I'm upon sure. them, uh, and some people that are not even associated with Christmas. I saw the whole Peanuts gang. Uh, with uh, with red Santa hats on, it was uh, it was glorious, and there was a SpongeBob right next to him. But the thing that I really took away this year was uh, you're not going to believe this. Um, people are starting to mix the deep blue lights with the deep purple lights. <laughs> it's something that I never thought that I would see, but now that I have, I'll never go back. So get wow. them on the show. All right, well let's get R and D in it, and uh, let's figure this out. <laughs> You guys do the business stuff. You get it how, yeah. It's like peeling back the curtain. Yeah, it really is. And, <laughs> but I just love how I see, like, and now you see those, like, reindeer, those wire reindeer shaped things with the lights on it stuck in lawns year round in LA. Like, it, it's just like, you know, <laughs> and the head just completely. starts to droop more and more throughout the, <laughs> right, like almost completely to the ground, still hanging on tight, waiting for the yeah. day that, the, that dad comes out around November to just kind of do this with it. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> the head droops and the unkept lawn just grows higher and higher around it. The lawn just the lawn pushes it back up to be <laughs> We're the, the virus. Gr- yes, we are the <laughs> virus. But it's so fun it's so funny how manufactured all of this is. And it's still a beautiful, wonderful experience to go see the people putting effort and energy and real heart and love because they love the holiday and they love celebrating and all that shit. Um, it's a wonderful sight to behold to see all the, I that wonder, shit, but I just hate it when it's mass produced and then it's all over the place all year round. And it's like, ah, oh, man, that takes the magic out of it. What is your thought about how this season will go this year? So let's assume that, you know, COVID and quarantine is continuing. We're going through this, what is going to be a very contentious election. Do you think... Do you think people are going to go overboard and be like, "That's it, we gotta, we gotta bring Christmas hard," and pe- it, like we're gonna have a Christmas explosion with decorations and stuff? Because it's like, well, if I can't go see people, then I'm just gonna broadcast my love and my Christmas cheer across the fucking sky. I really. Like or that. is it gonna be the opposite where people are just like, <laughs> let's "I just can't." Get, let's just get. There's through. no way. Not this to, year. Let's get to 2021. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would love it if we could all decide to as a as a community, as humans, as earthlings, to kind Christmas of Christmas explosion. To unify a Christmas explosion and put lights on your balcony and, and, and you know, if you if you're not a decorating type, which I truly am not I'll get a tree, like a little mini tree. You could get it like CVS or something and I'll water it for the few weeks that Christmas happens. And then that's it. I'm sure, I'm sure Alana's going to want to go crazy this year, but I think you don't have to water those trees, Steve. Those are fake trees. You don't have to water them. (laughs) Oh fuck. That's why it shorted out and the lights didn't work. No, but, um, (laughs) sparks are flying. I would love it. (laughs) Why is this happening? I would love it if, um, if, we could all unify and just if you don't like going out all out for Christmas with decorations and shit, just put a little effort into it this year and show a little Christmas cheer. And I think we could at least kind of all like band together on that kind of a fun emotion. If you we've, celebrate Christmas, obviously. We've never um 
created like a cause here at the vet. Like we've never just like went no. for it and been like, this is the thing that we're going to maybe Christmas explosion is something that we push this year. That's great. And Christmas explosion is just about, you know, like having a little fun, having a but little, can we, uh, can yes. We call it Christmas explosion, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, should, we should do a commercial where Santa Steve b- bursts through a wall like the Kool Aid Man and goes, "It's gonna be a fucking Christmas explosion this year, motherfuckers! Yeah, yeah. Let's all get together and do it." Yeah. Like, and at the and least, it cuts to you at the watering least. your electric. <laughs> yeah, dish, dish, dish. Sparks the least. flying in my face. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's like you don't have to go full out. I mean, putting lights up can suck, but just one string of lights on the outside so that you're broadcasting that cheer out to the people that are stuck inside. So when they look out their windows, it's just like this yeah. tableau. I'd love so this to is a way we lights. could just take credit for people putting up decorations yeah. that they would normally put up. <laughs> yeah. They did well, it. We- we can get we can plant the seed that it would be a unifying thing for everybody to like who celebrates Christmas, by the way, because you don't want to push that on people that don't give a fuck about Christmas or it bothers them or whatever. Holiday expl- December explosion, <laughs> please. But I mean, I think it's important, yep. especially in L.A., because in L.A., I'm feeling so detached, more detached than ever from the people that live here uh, with us. And um I would just love to bring the start, people of start crying. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'd love to bring the people of LA together, maybe more specifically, um, to kind of just like unify with you know some kind. If you celebrate Christmas in oh. LA, so Wait. Steve, you've forgotten what el- people in LA are like. Yeah, no, I just, I, I just mm. hope that people are better than than what they appear to be. I always hope. That. <laughs> <laughs> okay don't look at the news <laughs> yeah i know but, um, uh, but now that it's like now that i'm feeling more detached than ever from humanity and people in la it would be nice to unify with the people that care about the idea of christmas even though it's kind of a manufactured thing at this point but i've always seen the idea of christmas as giving and and family and friends and uh you know, that is always a nice thing, and it's nice to take a break from all this shit to have a nice thing, and there's like a way... like nice things. Yeah, there's a way to have nice things if you make time for it and allow yourself to enjoy it, but I think we could unify on, like, kind of at least the Christmas idea, the holiday idea that that uh, family and gifts and, you know, it's not even about... It's not about the jewelry. December Explosion... Cover your family in Christmas lights and send us a picture. That's Co- the whole thing. Cover your it's family just an in Christmas lights now. while they're sleeping, and then send us pictures. <laughs> <laughs> send us pictures of Christmas your family prank. sleeping. <laughs> Christmas prank. <laughs> if I woke up covered in lights, I think I'd think I was dead. <laughs> uh, I finally got my oh, wish, and I'm in, in monkey bone. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a, such a weird joke. Uh, back to the decorations and the reason for them. Jackson's birthday. <laughs> Have you guys had to plan a like a, like some kind of special event yet or celebration during quarantine and had the pressure of like how do I make this special even though there's nothing we can do? Yeah, Ooh, I my mean, my girlfriend's uh, got a birthday coming up. I have no idea. Most okay, of well, the... dude, you want to borrow my decorations? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. At actually. least the Ben Ten one. <laughs> uh, I I um, you can only do so much, right? And safely, and and you can't go like, let's go to a fancy dinner somewhere or whatever, because that's no matter you just what you just doing, get creative. It's not you gonna just get creative, be romantic or work. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's the year where I think like it's like, oh, you put some effort into this and some thought, and that means more than anything. But yeah. Uh, I'm proud to report Jackson said it was one of his best birthdays Aww. and that was surprising because you can't invite the kids over to come play and you can't do all that stuff. But we just, you know, we fawned over and we let him choose every single meal. He Elliot, chose, you uh, want to shit on those decorations again after <laughs> Jeff said that? <laughs> I, my first thought was like, yeah, I mean, Jackson's so young, you probably doesn't remember many of his birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> what were the before time birthdays like? <laughs> oh, he knows. He remembers. I'll man. Yeah. He knows the themes. He knows the cakes. I know. It it's is crazy. crazy. It is crazy the 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 intensity of the birthday when you're a kid and like the just 
the feeling of act it feels so special it feels truly yeah. Like, oh yeah and i can imagine being just with your family without friends and the pressure of that even as a kid that being kind of a nervous thing if you're a bit introverted or you're going to be an introvert so to be able to like hang out with your parents and call the shots that seems like a dream Dude, come true I, for a kid. I i remember having a birthday very young at mcdonald's and like loving that and feeling yeah. like that was like the greatest thing in the world and it was yeah, just dude. like yeah it was literally a fast food restaurant <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it had a fucking disgusting ball pit but all of that to me felt like going having your own special like you had like i don't know there was just something special about it when you're a kid but it's like such a crazy concept when you think about it as an it's adult. just your yeah it's your day so even the like we used to rent the local arcade out and by rent it it would mean every kid would have to bring ten dollars and pay the dude ten dollars and we would get it for an hour the whole arcade wow, not to ourselves awesome. it was still open to the public and the guy just sat at the corner in the back and would hand us a quarter whenever he, we needed one so we'd run to him he'd give us a quarter and we'd go throw it in the machine oh so and then it we was more about him giving you coins than renting out the it, place. It felt special, but there's no way any of us went through ten dollars yeah, worth you of guys quarters in that hour. Off. Yeah, Maybe no, it was it, two it, hours. It sounds like this dude's just got a side hustle. <laughs> yeah, that, for sure. He hangs out but at an arcade. <laughs> we felt so. We felt special. We felt like it was ours, and it was it was an event. That guy so. got to go home at night and be like, <laughs> <laughs> "Those fucking kids." <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> what kind of terrible person? <laughs> what I'll do is that I'll, I'll open the whole arcade to them, but also everybody else. Uh, I made fifty bucks today off these stupid <laughs> fucking kids. <laughs> and if I stay, if, if I sit further away from the machines, they have to walk even further. <laughs> They spend even less money. I improve my margins by 15% just by going by the hot dog. By just a little bit. And no matter, no matter where they're at in the arcade, they can see me. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Sometimes they'll ask for two quarters because it's a quick game or 50, 50 cents per play. Nope. One quarter at a time. One time I one gave a quarter. One time I gave a kid with nicer shoes two quarters. <laughs> what a, it'd be like a normal kid, not part of the party in the arcade, just watching these kids weirdly like, run back up to their little like, pimps what are they and doing? get their quarters. And be like, what is going? Why are you? I mean, it was like running up. It was like he was daddy essentially running up to daddy yeah. for coins. Like war bucks. <laughs> Yep. Oh God! What kind of special piece of shit do you have to be to like totally <laughs> <laughs> just completely fuck over these kids? <laughs> Holy shit! I mean, whatever. You guys had fun, so yeah, we had a of, great time. It kind of worked out, I guess. Look, my my time period, the time might be off. It could have been two hours. Who knows? Maybe yeah, we could maybe. get to that ten dollar mark. But dude, I remember uh, those it was days. definitely dude. It was definitely a hustle, and I'm sure oh, yeah. there was like a there was a you got to rent something on top of it thing. But it was cheap right. enough that the fr the kids could go. We'd have fun, and it was a good two hours. And it was when yeah. arcades were cool. It wasn't like the lame Chuck E. Cheese arcades that every single arcade is now. It was just straight games, y'all. Fuck That's yeah, it. the good old just, days. Yeah, cabinets oh, and see, cabinets of like games. The, I always like the stuff, the big things, the like the, the the like Discovery Ski Zone. Ball. Remember that? Oh DZ? yeah, yeah, yeah. That DZ, place was gnarly. DZ was a good time. I think I went there maybe twice. Is DZ like a, uh, yeah. a ticket-based economic situation? It was a discovery it's zone. capitalist for sure in nature. Um, it was more of a socialist execution by the time it was done. It ended up <laughs> in, uh, in bankruptcy, which is just a warning sign, you know? Vote, I, everybody. I truly think places <laughs> like that benefited both the parent and the child because it gave the parents 
time to completely forget about their children while they play yeah. in a playground that is as safe as it can be in a strip mall <laughs> in, in great. anywhere USA. Oh. But <laughs> behind quarter guys show. sitting in the chair. Yeah. Yeah. Got behind quarter guys sitting in the chair just handing out quarters one at a time. The parents were behind there having an orgy smoking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like just smoke billowing out. We could see yeah. them, but we weren't allowed to talk to them. Has anybody um, tried? There, to- there's an oh. episode of Peep Show, though, that is the most, the funny, one of the funniest episodes of the show where, uh, Jez starts taking care of a snake and then he loses a snake in like a Chuck E. Cheese basically and then he, <laughs> he loses his own kid. It's a one, it's the shenanigans are great. You Love check it. it out, guys. It sounds like a great time. Uh, <laughs> has it, has anybody tried to do a like a Discovery Zone or like a Dave and Buster's that's um, like, like it's a children, there's a children, it's children focused, but like literally there's like a champagne room for parents. Where there's like alcohol and like <laughs> they sell them booze and shit. Does that exist? I think that's called bowling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like you can't yeah. have five year olds run around in a bowling alley. I'm talking about like a place where you can have five year olds run yes, around. Yes, you can. Yeah, but like oh, yeah. you don't want to though. Because five year old running around a bowling alley is kind of. Dangerous. I don't think you've been to the right bowling alley, Steve. And bowling alley parties are probably, now that I think about it, one of the most underrated birthday party good times. I agree. Bowling alley parties are mwah, I agree. for kids and adults. Bowling will always be social bowling, not like competitive bowling, will always be a fun thing to do, I think. Yeah, I think every te- like if you every adult probably has memories of just really good teenage bowling night time. Dude, like, I, I yeah, I have a bowling oh, a, yeah. I have a bowling story where I mean it's not much of a story, but it's like it was the first time in my maybe the only time in my life that I'm aware of where there were two girls that liked me and they were both there at the bowling place for this like bowling hangout with friends. Shit. One and, was old Beth dude. behind the counter <laughs> handing out the shoes. Yeah. And one was mom. <laughs> Listen, I had my first cougar experience when I was Hey, 16. honey. <laughs> you got I know you want those six and a halves. <laughs> you and I like got them for you. Me. They're uh, freshly but, sprayed. But listen, I liked only one. Well, I liked one of them more than the other one. And I had never been in a position where I was like, oh, shit, these two girls like me. I can have you get to choose. Dude, I had no idea what to do. I had never really even had a had a girlfriend at the time. And uh, and my friends were like really psyching me out. They're like, "What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do?" And like, <laughs> one of my friends was like, "I'm getting texts from what's her name saying that that, that they're it's." And there was like tension between the three. It was just like a, I, I don't remember what exactly happened. I remember there was a lot of like sneaking around and kind of like trying to hide and and just like stupid things you do when you're a teenager. But man, the memories. Like that all happened at a bowling alley, which was like the perfect mm-hmm. place to go yeah. with your friends and just fucking fuck around. Especially at yep. night, it's so futuristic. What black light? That's crazy. <laughs> Turn <laughs> it on. Yeah, yeah. Every every bowling alley, like late nineties, <laughs> early two thousands, were like, guys. We're about to get nuts. We're going to turn off the lights. You're still going to be able to see, but there's also going to be some other colors. Also, no drinking. Here we go. <laughs> and you didn't care. You didn't care. No. You didn't need it. It was so fun. We're yeah. going to play the best bops from today and also probably a lot of the 80s. Actually, it's mostly going to be 80s because that's <laughs> where I'm from. And this is my bowling that's the music alley. I like. and we're listening to the 80s. <laughs> hey, welcome to um, Rick's Bowling Alley. Tonight, we're going to be listening to whatever the fuck Rick wants. <laughs> <laughs> Rick's picks, ding, everybody. Ding, 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 Rick's ding, picks. Ding, 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 what I did not ding, like. Ding, 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 bowling alleys. Bowling alleys. Good. What I hated was the skating rinks. That freaked me out because I wasn't oh, good at skating. Oh, I stayed the and fuck was away. A, no, no, that's terrible. I remember eating crap as a kid and knocking the wind down on myself. It was terrible. But we've covered Christmas, birthdays, bowling, all sorts of fun things. Guys, <laughs> would you like to hear about some underwear? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love it. Why not? Well, guys, I'm, guess it's natural to well, go there. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I just want to tell you guys about uh, me undies, okay? Oh, okay. Um, Love okay, them. We saw, is that cool? Do you want to do the ads? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. That was great. Okay. I mean, 
I was like, okay, why not? Here, Do it. Again. I love Oh, speaking that. of the ads, guys, we saw one leaf fall on the ground yesterday, so that can only mean one thing. Fall is finally coming. It's time to get your <laughs> booties ready for the spookiest time of year with the softest undies to grace your bottom. We were just talking about this. If you want to decorate, you can decorate your bottoms. Me Undies knows exactly how to celebrate a season with the coolest prints and colors and the softest undies known to man. I'm wearing them right now. I only wear them. They want you to be so, comfortable and to so express Steve. yourself every day and in every way. So here's what you're going to do, guys. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to give you one to two personal anecdotes. They're oh. good, and I like the way they look and feel. How ready are you for the fall and Halloween printed undies? I'm so ready. I can't wait to see what they send me. I hope it's got pumpkins on it. Their undies grow on trees. No, seriously. Me undies are made from irresistibly soft natural fibers sourced from beechwood trees. And you know what natural fibers mean? That their micromodal is not only super soft, but breathable, light, and impossibly cozy. Ooh. That's some serious comfort. Everything Me yeah. undies does is to help you feel truly comfortable from head to toe, from outside yeah. to it. Never run out of underwear with the Me undies membership. This is the best thing in the world. A subscription that sends a new pair of underwear right to your door. Plus, you get site-wide savings and exclusive sales. Keep your eyes peeled for their spooky Halloween prints. MeUndies has a great offer for the listeners of the Valleycast. For any first-time purchasers, you get 50% off and free shipping. You guys know this brand. We talk yeah. about it all the time. It's a no-brainer. It's 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you would like to help us out and help your junk out, you can go to MeUndies.com slash valley. That's MeUndies.com slash valley. MeUndies.com slash valley to get 15% off your first order, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee. Here's a free anecdote for you, me undies. Uh, the best day of my life was when all other undies were cast out and ostracized oh, yeah. from my drawer because I finally got enough me undies over my monthly gift, my monthly Christmas. And ah, I'm never like, ah, shit, I got to wear those ones today. Nope. Super happy. Exactly. I, feel I the said, same way, Joe. I, I'll tell you what, I said hi to me undies and bye to buy undies. Bye to buy undies. Also, um, I can't tell the difference between the MeUndies I've had forever and the MeUndies that are new because also the true stays it's the same. So that's another free anecdote. Uh, do you guys want to tell me about anything? Well, you're gonna have to wait a second while I bring up my conversational topic because I don't okay. Well, how about this, Joe? Yet. How how about you listen to something I have to say? I have a yeah, bunch I'd of, love to. Uh, <laughs> friends who've gone to this place that uh, you guys may have heard of. It's called Full Sail University. It's located just outside of Orlando, Florida. So, of course, I'm well familiar with it. It's a wonderful place. I've seen all sorts of people go here become real successful. Full Sail University offers associates, bachelor's, and master's degrees designed for the world of entertainment, media, arts, and technology. It's offered both online and on campus, and these programs are accelerated so you can earn your degree in half the time. That's great. Degrees are immersive and hands-on so you can learn your craft using the same tools and technologies found in the industry, Full Sail grads are able to come back and audit classes throughout their careers and receive lifetime career development support throughout their professional journey. Full Sail grads have gone on to do big things, from mixing hit records to working on major Hollywood films to writing os winning Oscars, Grammys, and more. We even have grads working here at uh, or over there at Rooster Teeth. We are not Rooster Teeth, but apparently they have Full Sail grads. Uh, we also work with a bunch of them at um, We know uh, Andy Mogren is a, yeah, uh, a Full Sail grad. It's so crazy. It's it, I remember too. hearing about it all growing yeah. up and then um, moving to LA and everyone being like, oh yeah, no, I went to Fools. Yeah, I went to Fools. Yeah. I'm like, oh, cool. Yep. Uh, enrolled Got students receive a laptop along with industry software at a deep institutional discount. To learn more about Full Sales programs as well as potential scholarship opportunities, and there might be a bunch right now given everything that's going on, a lot of uh, good times to take advantage of stuff like this, guys, visit fullsale.edu slash valleycast. That's fullsale.edu slash valleycast. Fullsale.edu slash Valleycast to learn more about Full Sales programs. Um, Great job, I do Elliot. have something to talk about, Elliot. Thank you very much for asking, and thank you for filling in the time with uh, such a great read. Absolutely. I would like thank to you. talk about how, you know, as uh, we've all been stuck inside, uh, not only as people, but as a, as a business over the last six, seven months. And one of the things that helped us get through it is uh, stamps.com. Ooh. As we slowly adjust to this new normal, we still need to be smart about how we do business. Luckily, there's Stamps.com to make things easier. Thousands of small business owners have discovered the benefits of Stamps.com in recent months because, you know, they had to. <laughs> We've been yeah. able to keep our business running and avoid the crowds at the post office all from our own computers, which is what we are uh, really good at now. We're really good at sitting in front of a <coughs> computer. If you need people to do that, come to us. <laughs> My mom uses stamps.com and I'm pretty sure she uses our code as well. And she Ooh. sends me little packages with little gifts and stuff and she, she does it all with stamps.com and she loves Are it. Are there any other sponsors in this episode that your mom well, uses? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> she probably uses them all. I think she does me also undies? have, I think she's purchased me undies as gifts. Using what a sweetheart. Doll. 
Yeah. Man. She's a sweet With lady. With stamps.com, everybody, you can print postage on demand and avoid going to the post office. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah, stay, stay in your place. Uh, you're going to save money with discounted rates that you can't even get at the post office anyway. Stamps.com also offers UPS services with discounts up to, get this, everybody, 62% and no residential surcharges. That's Stamps. crazy Stamps. town. That's crazy nice town. Big number. Stamps.com brings all the mailing and shipping services you need right to your computer in the comfort of your own home or office. Whether you're a small business like us sending invoices, an online seller shipping out products, or just working from home, and you need to mail stuff, you know? Sometimes you gotta mail stuff. Stamps.com can handle it with ease. Simply use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send. Once your mail is ready, just leave it out for your mail carrier, or schedule a pickup, or drop it in a mailbox. It's that simple. And like I said, with Stamps.com, you get great discounts too. Five cents off of every stamp and up to 62% off USPS and UPS shipping rates. Stamps.com is a no-brainer, everybody, saving you time and money. So right now, our listeners get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale without any long-term commitment. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in ValleyCast. That's Stamps.com. Enter ValleyCast. Back to us. Wow, nice work, Joe. Thanks, dude. Nice work, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Interjections were mwah, on point, everybody. Good mwah, good job. Um, chef, great. Chef's kiss. So, um, so did you guys know that I got a butt pillow? Have we talked about this? No. I've, on, I've only seen pictures of the legend that is your butt pillow, but do yeah. elaborate. <laughs> well, I talked about it on Dynamic Banter quite a bit, so I won't get into all the details, but... To give you the TLDR, I mm. was uh, on Instagram and the a targeted ad showed me a butt pillow. It's literally a pillow that is shaped like the buttocks of a person. But <laughs> someone's butt. Someone it's shaped like someone's butt, and it was marketed as one of the most comfortable pillows you'll ever own. Mm. And I, I'm a sucker for a novelty, strange thing, and and uh, good marketing, and sucker good, for great marketing, great targeted <laughs> marketing, yeah. And so I, I went to the their Instagram page, and I was, I hit them up because I was like, maybe they'll send me one or something. That'd be kind of cool. And so I hit them up and was like, hey, I love your pillow. This is crazy good. And they were like, yeah, we love it too. <laughs> I was like, oh. It's seventy nine ninety nine. And wait, uh, you didn't? You just you, <laughs> were you more? I mean, you have to be a little direct, right? You have to be like, would you be willing to send me a pillow in exchange for social promotion? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I wasn't I, I wasn't gonna go there because I was just like, I'm just gonna casually be like, hey, I like that's be, like. That's like, like nudging somebody with flirting, your, with yeah. your elbow, but <laughs> yeah. like not actually touching them. It's like you're five feet away and you're trying to nudge them. Yeah, we were just <laughs> yeah. we were just flirting. Ah. I slid into their DMs. I didn't want to. Hey, seem, cool thing you got. I didn't want to seem thirsty. I didn't want to seem you know. I want. I just want to slide into some DMs, and so um, that's then, such an asshole response. <laughs> uh, we love it too. And they I, well then they sent me a discount. They were like, "Here's a discount. Here's a discount code to get a discount off." Did That's you never? Nice. Have you ever felt more successful than when the butt pillow place sent you a discount? Oh no, I felt I felt on top of the world. I was like, "This must <laughs> be what Patton Oswalt feels like." <laughs> this must be what Robert Pattinson. Feels Robert like. Pattinson is treated this way. Yeah. So, um, long story short, I went on my little trip, and then when I came back, it was here, and it's um, it's not cheap, guys. It's like a hundred bucks. Or something yeah. like that. Can I but, see it? Yeah, yeah. It's like a yeah. hundred butts. It's a hundred butts. But um, it came in the mail, and this is it. Here it is. This it's is the so pillow. funny. It's <laughs> <laughs> wait. So it's not a pill. I thought it was a pillow that you just sat on. No, no, no it's no, no, a no, butt, no. Elliot. It is, it is a butt. It is a pillow with, with a, a a nice amount of quad, which yeah. actually accentuates the butt perfectly. It's yoga pants. Yeah. It's yoga pants. Yeah. It's it's got a yoga pants cover on it, and uh, mm. and and the 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 um, sheet of Watch paper your came. Watch with. your fingers. No, no, no. It's easy, mine. Easy, easy, uh -huh. easy. Finders keepers, Elliot. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I uh, 
in in the sheet of paper with information about the pillow it came with, it said that this area here is the sweet spot, and to bury your head into it <laughs> <laughs> for the most comfort. <laughs> and, I mean, uh, it knows what it's doing. It, That's, I, uh, think it, I think they leaned into it, but um, literally. This is yeah, a this the sweet is a, spot. It's a great airplane pillow too. I think. No, you know? it's not. Look at that. You're not going to take that on an airplane. Not in a million years are you busting that out on an airplane. Could you imagine? I was. It, I think I even said it on dynamic banter. Like, imagine walking through the airport. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you. It looks like you killed somebody. Yeah. Uh, I love. I this woman. I left her torso for myself. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, um, it's it's you know it's a dumb novelty. It is very comfortable, and it's that's made... a, that's the question: Is it comfortable? Yeah. Do you fall asleep on it? Um, well, I I I rest on it like in the you know the leg part kind of comes into your neck, and you can like lay on it and rest, and it's really that's very comfortable. I I haven't slept on it yet, but Alana. Mm uses it in her like computer chair when she's like uncomfortable in her computer chair and she's like it's the most comfortable padding you like to sit on follow up if you start to nuzzle your your face and head into the sweet spot will you fall into it sucking in your entire body and is it an entrance to narnia <laughs> wow i'll give it a shot i mean holy yep. shit <laughs> If I could get the fuck out of here, I'd, I'm in. Woo! Steve, <laughs> when you get a chance, next time you get a chance, do a significant amount of uh, acid or mushrooms and just see what happens with that pillow. Oh, no. I'm going to be like, I killed someone! <laughs> oh, the cops are here! And it's going to grow and, yeah. You turn yourself in. You, you actually you. go to the station. Yeah. I'm sorry I, for I what sw- I've done! I would probably be like, Alana, call the police. I, you have to. I'm I a monster. I can't live with this. I killed some of the bodies in the living room. <laughs> we uh, speaking of Instagram targeted ads, some of they're them getting are, better, man. They, that's what they're I'm incredible. saying. They're getting so, so good. We got um, Grace was targeted this like sleep mask that is like I don't know if you guys have been keeping up with sleep mask technology <laughs> over the past. No. I'm, I'm ready for an update. I am ready it's, for an update. Here's the I canceled update. my magazine they, subscription. <laughs> They have figured it out, and uh, you canceled your magazine subscription. I can get you a code. It's not an MLM. It's fine. It's, you don't have to buy anything, but if you do, then I can I can hook you up. But uh, it's <laughs> yeah, quarterly at you. this point because they had to reduce because of COVID. But um, so <laughs> y- you uh, it wraps like this. It's like this thick. It's like goggles, but it's foam, and it wraps around your ears all the way, and it completely blacks out uh, everything, and it's all cushioned, so you can kind of roll around, and it doesn't move. It is it is changed my life <laughs> got you it got you it is when i when i wear it in the morning because you know it gets bright out you can stay in the page of plaque <clears throat> i'll wake up and it's like my eyes are like i feel like i'm waking up from like years of sleeping it's incredible wow. all from an instagram ad however there was another thing that uh was ordered that was very stupid and it was a thing that hooks to a door jam and it it goes for your neck have you seen these this sounds it's like a what, neck where? hammock a door hammock or something like that and you lay on the ground like this and a rubber band with a thing wraps around your oh, neck and yeah. you rest your head and it stretches your your head out. Grace ordered it like months and months ago and it finally showed up. We tried it. It's like a total piece of crap. So you got to be careful. <laughs> also, if you see an Instagram man, go on Amazon and get the or eBay and get a cheaper version. There's no way you should spend a hundred dollars on that butt pillow. Oh no no absolutely not I got I got should have got should have got one used I got I got pulled <laughs> yeah, yeah in. man oh god it might smell like farts um dude Elliot do you think that your ma- your sleep mask is um what what would be the difference between doing that and then having like blackout curtains Price. yeah probably the same thing but th- this is nice because we don't have the ability to do blackout curtains because of the uh, way the room is shaped yeah, it's like yeah, every yeah. the light just pours in so yeah and both like, ellie yeah, and grace curtains, can't right. lift their arms above their shoulders right, it's kind right. of a weird thing that they both have that affliction but it worked out i'm surprised it's you're talking hereditary. about it on the podcast so candidly joe mm-hmm. we're we're a waddle duo we always have been we're the waddlers we can't uh, go. I've always wanted to look into blackout curtains because I love the idea of being in absolute pitch blackness in the morning. 
But Alana is such a creature of the sun that she she's not into it. But I Look also up the creature sleep, of well, the I, sun. But I feel like does it feel like it's a little constricting? Like what? Like I shouldn't be wearing this while I sleep. It takes like a second to get used to, but the thing is, the lightest pressure on your eyes basically starts to feel like a hug. Like it's the most secure. Oh. You feel so just like it's like the per- it's like a weighted blanket for your eyeballs. I'm into that. I'd recommend it. Well, send me a link, will you? I'll send, <laughs> send you me that discount link. code. I may or may not make money off of your purchase. <laughs> That's fine. You can make money off of it. You the uh, no, I won't. Of me. Uh, <laughs> I'm a bit of a miser when it comes to like. I don't trust anything as far as advertising goes, and I don't like spending money. Uh, it terrifies me. But the Instagram ads are getting so good that I've been clicking on them and considering way too much. And the and it's last so two easy to buy. It's exactly. So easy to buy. The last two that have got me, and I still might get one of them. Have you guys seen the little mosquito zapper that's been going around? No. It's uh-huh. this little thing you put on your, your table and it kills all mosquitoes and flies within your vicinity within like five minutes. Nice. And it's not an electric zap. It's this, it almost looks like uh, just a little hole that they fly into and it like kills them with uh, ultrasonic sound waves or something <laughs> like yeah. that. But I'm like, that's, that's cool. And also hate mosquitoes and flies and they're fucking everywhere right now because it's so hot and we're just getting chewed up. Yeah. So like I got that into the cart. I almost pressed it, then I was like, nah, this isn't you, Joe. This isn't you. You know you, <laughs> you better than Instagram. You flew too close to the sun. Yeah. <laughs> you flew too close to the sun, Joe. But you could have I mean, saved your family from getting malaria, Joe. Yeah, I still might get it. And then the other one, have you guys seen the ad for the uh, the Bedroom Galaxy? It's just this, yes. this light show that you yes. turn on, and you like throw, and your room just yes. turns into the freaking Milky Way. Yes. I might get that one, too. Do you think yes. that'll Kids. work, though? You Absolutely not. Yes. <laughs> but that's how they got me. They got me. No. This ain't you, Joe. No. This Dude, ain't we, you. I'm, I'm telling you. We got you. one. It works. It's good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped that there. I didn't want to name a third thing from Instagram that we got. But didn't want to be you got the, in the weirdest, lamest way ever. You got the bedroom galaxy. I love it. Wow. It's good when you're when you're pretty uh yeah, but it's your your standards have to be pretty low for what what you want for entertainment. Also, well, it's for I'd my children, so that they're, they're fine. Yeah, oh, but we're dude, also in a in a time it. where like any little bit of joy is like a, a delicious treat. It's wonderful. Speaking so, of that, mm-hmm. speaking a little get bit of joy, joy from those lights, that's fine. I sent you. Uh, I sent you guys. You can take a look at this sleep mask. It's it's. The, I mean, look at the way the girl's sleeping. I on was the really thumb. hoping you had sent us some porn. I was really hoping for that. I would never do that. <laughs> That's old man. That's pre-COVID. I've man. grown a lot in quarantine. I've grown a lot, Steve, and I'm not going to be sending you pornography. Let me see if I can find some pornography. Let me find some pornography for you, real quick. God, where can I find pornography at this hour? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it's not loading for me for some reason, but I see. I see. It looks kind of like yeah. a little, like a. It looks like a like a, a future mask of some kind like if you walk it's called into lunia a, it's called for, po- for folks listening lunia yeah it's like a little it's like, looks like a silk pillow it's perfect and it's the uh, t- it's perfect it would change um, your life oh look at that it does look like a face hug and, and it also looks like you are a cast in demolition man and yes. you're an extra right. in the background somewhere. Right. That's that's where I was trying to go. Okay, with. last thing before we go here, boys. I, okay. I have a I have a thing I want to do with you that I thought was fun. I stumbled upon a website that you can put in any town, specifically let's say towns that we grew up in, and it will take you back in time and show you and tell you what dinosaurs kicked it <gasps> in your town back in the day. Wait, really? Yeah, it's dinosaurpictures.org slash ancient uh, hyphen earth. Wait, was there dinosaurs like everywhere or were there dinosaurs only in some places? I mean, they, there were about 42 everywhere. dinosaurs. 42 That's what exactly. I thought. What is mm-hmm. it so called? Steve, dinosaurs what? Dinosaurpictures.org slash ancient hyphen earth. <laughs> so I'm going to put in Columbia Falls, dash, Montana. Dash, not slash. Dash. 
Gash. I'm gonna put in my, and we could do it for everybody if you like. Or you oh, can I see. And... What did Earth look like 240 million years ago? That's cool and, too. And it does it through all the ages as well. So you can go. It starts with like the first green algae, all the way up to Triassic, Jurassic, and all the way up to dinosaur extinction. So I'm gonna put dinosaur <gasps> extinction, Columbia Falls, Montana. I had, let's see here. I had the Ah Shis Lapelta. Which is, it looks like, a, it's kind of like an ankylosaur. That's dope. Ankylosaurs are cool. I got the Das Platosaurus, Das Platosaurus, which is a cool ass freaking T Rex looking predator with a mohawk, which is dope. <laughs> Wait, I wanna see pictures. How, are you, how do you see pictures? Well, we're gonna have to probably just do it, I think, in post or put in Columbia Falls, Montana and, and click on them. And then I I'll also have them. the, oh, oh, I see. the Montana. Click. The Montana Darcho. The Montana Zadarcho. <laughs> which is it's crazy that it was called that back then. Yeah, isn't that nuts? Oh. And that's like a pterodactyl thing flying over a uh, ancient freaking Lake Missoula, which used to take up that's cool. so much. I mean you just uh, imagine. Can you just imagine? That's so cool. Yeah, you, it's so, really uh, fun sight. You, what, so wait, I don't. I'm trying to make sure if I'm in the same thing. It, is I'm seeing the Earth and then like a almost like a Google Earth kind of thing. Yep. Yep, and then okay. up to the top left, you, you can put in. in where you want to go. And then nearby yep. watched, fossils um, is where is where I'll yes. see what was there. Okay. And then the top right, it says jump to, and that's where you pick your era. So <gasps> you can also find out like the first insects, first land animals, stuff like that. It's crazy. It's fun. So it's apparently, I watched. Uh, on, oh, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say I watched on uh, HBO the um, uh, questioning. Darwin documentary, which was about uh, the young earth creationists kind of fighting back against uh, current evolutionists and people who still think that the earth was 5,000 years. Oh, I and, bet that was uh, fascinating. They have a museum that I really want to go to called the, I think, I forget what it's called, but it's like the Creationist Science Museum or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I really want to, I really, really want to go. And they show it in the documentary and it's crazy. And one of my favorite parts was they had this whole thing about how they explain they had to explain dinosaurs to fit the genesis account of what happened so they used sort of ancient tales from like the you know asian eastern cultures about dragons to say that that was very clear that you know 5000 years ago dinosaurs walked alongside man uh, and there's all five, these photos 5000 years ago five thousand yeah something like that and then are you talking well, about well, the cabazon dinosaurs um i don't know what it is specifically but it was just they have diagrams of of human or not di models like lifelike models of mannequins next to the actual dinosaurs and all these kids and all these people are walking through like wow that's incredible <laughs> dude that that's totally that <laughs> gift insane. shop at those dinosaurs in palm springs that museum uh, the, the, yes, is it called yes, the creation like and yeah. earth history museum and bookstore in santee california i mean i don't know that that's what, but joe you've been there the big dinosaurs in palm springs you know the big dinosaurs yeah. oh oh yes On i know what you're talking about there there's a yeah, museum yeah. there and they have like humans with dinosaurs and shit it's like very similar you go inside the dinosaur and you have to like look really closely to see that it's creation <laughs> it's right. just little it's subtle stuff. hints they like hide it it's very yeah. funny yeah. yeah they have it like etched in the so crazy, so weird. That like that back in the exists. corner, there's decorations up, and they're like, "We're celebrating this T Rex's five thousandth birthday today." Exactly. Yep. <laughs> Guys, I'm really excited about the three types of dinosaurs that were found in Oxnard. I'm very. Excited. What you got, baby? What you got? <laughs> I've got a, a, a Aleto Pelta. Ooh. Which was an that's... herbivore. It lived in the Cretaceous period and inhabited North America, and its fossils were found in places such as California. And it looks kind of like it's got like armor. It walks on all fours. It kind of has armor, and it's got like a long tail with like a, with like horns all along it. It's very strange. I've never seen anything. That sounds like, like it. an ankylosaur a little bit as well. Um, and also, check this out a plesiosaurus. Hell yeah, dude. Good dinosaur. Fuck yeah. Love a plesiosaurus. <laughs> They're aquatic. The ones that swim around, they look like they mm -hmm. have uh, whale fins. They have like four four whale fin kind yeah, of things. Yeah, dude. Uh, love a stuff. plesiosaurus. And, <laughs> and Absolute cutie. It's super cutie. <laughs> cutie patoot. And last but not least, a dinosaur I've never heard of that I think maybe is the most ridiculous name for a dinosaur <laughs> I've ever heard. Are you ready? Yeah, dude. The Fresnosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> Friend, best dinosaur. Yeah. 
<laughs> best friends with Denver the Last Dinosaur. <laughs> Fresnosaurus, he lives in Fresno. Right. Fresnosaurus, he drives a Pinto. Fresnosaurus, Fresnosaurus <laughs> loves a snow cone. Fresnosaurus <laughs> also loves tacos. <laughs> Um, what's the, hold on? I'm looking up Fresnosaurus. <laughs> Please Man. look it up. It it actually looks kind of like a plesiosaurus. It's also aquatic. This is one of the first images that popped up. <laughs> a weird computer animated, <laughs> crappy, like pixelated. <laughs> Guys, the yeah. first Fresnosaur. the first Fresnosaurus fossil was discovered in 1943. By the way. Uh, and interestingly um, uh, enough, not in Fresno. So I don't know. <laughs> it's weird. He moved. Jonathan um, Fresno found it. <laughs> what's the name? What's the URL again, Joe? Uh, dinosaurpictures.org slash ancient hyphen earth. Okay, thank wow, you. Wow, only one specimen of the Fresnosaurus has been found by paleontologists. Wow. And they're saying it was not a dinosaur. It was a marine reptile, and it did coexist with dinosaurs. Marine reptiles are uh, very commonly confused with dinosaurs <laughs> from the Triassic and Jurassic period. Uh, very different, though. They didn't actually coexist together. Anyways, um, this <laughs> is my bedroom. Ja Thank you, Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Do you I like my hat? I, this is so cool. This is a great Isn't thing, fun? Joe. You, you found really a really fun. cool thing here. And you can change it to like, what did my hometown look like 750 million years ago? Yeah, if you got if we got some Pangea nuts in here, it'll take you back. It's I'm it looking looks like at it's just Pangea. showing me a red dot. I don't see do I need to do desktop? Is this not gonna work? No, right, no. Wait, are you are you looking at Lakeland? Yeah. I looked at Lakeland, man. I don't they, no dinosaurs, dude. It probably wasn't around. Probably the it might have been land. aquatic hey, at the Elliot, time. I yeah. just looked at Oakland or Lakeland. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. I just looked at Lakeland Same and thing. it's not looking good. Hey, man. Lakeland's oh, no. not there anymore, dude. It's not but there. It, <laughs> but Elliot, it does. Lakeland never existed. <laughs> Elliot, you don't exist. <laughs> That's what it feels like. That Elliot, is what it feels like. And that Lakeland brings us full circle. doesn't exist. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> it doesn't even exist. All right. Wait, hold up. Hold you up. You could it, convince wait. me that Florida isn't real if you try really hard. <laughs> I'm, getting I'm, a, I'm getting a ping here. It actually, it, says, uh, it actually says birthplace of Jesus. So congratulations. Wow. Lakeland, Florida. Elliot. Birthplace of Jesus. Thank you. I think yeah. you knew that, though. Oh, yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't tell oh, us, yeah, but you knew. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, this is this has been a real fun one, guys. I like it. I had a lot yeah. of fun on the show today. It's been a while. We've been avoiding each other on the podcast the last three weeks. Yeah. We've been very well, obviously avoiding each other. You know other. what you did, I, Joe. I don't like it. <laughs> Look, I told you I had a birthday party to plan for, you sons of bitches. <laughs> yeah. So what uh, happened? What <laughs> happened? We had the party. We, it was great. Uh, said seven was the best. So for those of you that um, don't know, you can uh, support this show and other shows and series that we are developing and creating and working on during this pandemic by going to patreon.com slash the valley folk. You can support the creation of new things and uh, the continued uh, escalation and success of the Valley Folk is in your hands. <laughs> also, if you're not uh, in a place where you can do a monthly thing, but you still want to help out, you can also do any of those sponsors. That helps a lot and yeah. Uh, yeah. makes them happy and keeps us going um, <laughs> since this is a big old moneymaker for us. And thank you for all of our patrons for sticking with us. I'm really excited. Yeah, it's to, super dope. I'm really excited for whatever. I feel like we're, we're nearing uh, there's some a, light at the, the end of this tunnel. There's a hump we're That's about to come over. Anything. Yeah, yeah. We're exactly. looking at uh, we're looking at Corona testing and maybe getting back in the office soon and creating together as uh, as safely as possible. And we're also doing little extra things um, to to interact with the patrons in different ways. We we recently kind of connected the Discord, so our Discord server's been popping. If you guys have Joe's been, there. been showing up and throwing birthday parties for a lot of you guys, yeah. you've seen him pop up at your houses. If you see yeah. a man show up on your front door with happy birthday decorations, let Joe in. It's a new perk. Yep. You're welcome. It's probably me. But uh, yeah, I did a Q&A on the Discord, and it was really fun and good. And I can't wait to anyways. get in there. I need to get in there. I'm excited yeah. to use it. Check, check um, it all out. 
also, we have a few other podcasts that you can check out in the Valleycast feed where you are currently hanging out. And if you're finishing up this episode like we are, uh, you can just hop right over to some of those other podcasts like Elliot Morgan's podcast, The Fundamentalists. Queer with, Fundamentalists. Um, and um, Fundamentalists, whatever. Jesus. Um, no, I said Cra <laughs> Fundamentalists. Uh, sure, Cra. <laughs> sure, yeah. Cra <laughs> yeah, Fundamentalists. Cra Fundamentalists. Um, yeah. Dot org slash Dinosaur Pictures Ancient Earth. And um, <laughs> the first time show where we're watching Lovecraft Country and reviewing that with Brett Register and Alana Ficus and sometimes Owen and other guests, I hope, at some point soon. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to slot in there. I just got to – it's hard on a Sunday night when I got school. I know, I know. We just want to get ahead of the curve and make sure we get our, yeah. our thoughts out there. But we're having a great time with the show, and it's really great, so check that out at YouTube.com. Or there's a video version of that at YouTube.com slash The Valley Cast. Elliot, what was, your, uh, what was your last Fundamentalists about? What would you guys cover? Was it Romance? I guess by the time this goes up, we're doing Oedipus Complex, and then we're doing one oh, on socialism, fun. which I'm pretty excited about. Pete nice. knows a lot about socialism, so we're going to try to define that, and that'll be, we'll record that this week. But yeah, the one on yeah. Oedipus Complex was uncomfortable and weird, and then we did one on romance, which was really good. Uh, and then one Did on Pete Tiger start it off? Was he like, Elliot, uh, th- uh, thank you for being here today. Tell me why you think your mom is hot. Exactly, yeah. I was like, I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to talk about this. this what are the this top five sexiest things about your mom, Elliot? Go. Oh, <laughs> where do I begin? <laughs> She's a great woman. She's got a great heart. She's good, good wise, good, wise, sweet person. Sweet. Yeah, good but mom. why do you want to have mom. sex with and her? Hot. <laughs> 10 out of 10 would be a son again to this mom. Um, all right. Well, guys, thank you so much for listening to the show. Anybody else want to say anything else? No, I'm good. It was really no. fun talking to you guys, and uh, you, you bring joy to my heart, so I appreciate you. Absolutely. To you guys. The feeling is mutual. All right, goodbye, everybody.